I've heard a lot of discussion about if you don't have Acheron's Light Cone, then is it even worth it to pull her because she might be worse than a Jing Liu, right? Well, it's Jing Liu. Jing Liu is amazing. Jing Liu is an S plus tier character. One of the only things I agree with on that Pride Win tier list, right? She is destructive and she is amazing. And the fact that Acheron even matches up with her is amazing. And if you do get her signature, then the fact that she outperforms Jing Liu is probably pretty amazing as well. So let's get into the abilities of this light cone and see what we're going to be working with if you guys do decide to be pulling on it. Now... For this artwork, let me just start with the artwork because I gotta say this is one of the best looking light cones to date because it's not just like some um, face on a light cone. It has like this nice reflective puddle, you know, look and it's just, um, it's got the flowers, you know, it's got the, uh, what is that? Is that Crimson Knot? Now, maybe that's the other one. I don't know. But the point is, is that it's pretty damn good. As for the base stats, uh, 635 is very, very good. It's, uh, it's, I think it's on the higher side, although it might be similar to just, um, not maybe as high as like a Dr. Ratio light cone or something like that, but overall it is on the good side. And as for the HP and defense, I do believe the defense is a little bit lower than normal, but the HP is fine, so it is perfectly good in that sense. As for the ability of the light cone, we're going to increase our crit damage by 36% every time she attacks. She's going to inflict a debuff on the enemy, which is going to give her one extra stack for her ultimate. And then on top of that, you are also going to get 24% damage to enemies that you afflict with the debuff, the empty bubbles. And then another 24% for the ultimate. So pretty much when you're using the ultimate, the majority of her damage right, comes from her ultimate. That's going to be a 48% damage increase along with increasing the ult uptime and then also giving us this massive 36 percent damage buff i prefer if it was a crit rate buff but honestly uh crit damage is just as good considering that it is the still the 36 crit value right and as for that okay that's just the normal stuff is it worth it to pull however yes i think it is worth it to pull if you don't have the funds to be able to pull the light cone then is acheron still a good option well Yes, it is. Going back to the beginning of the video, even if she does slightly not outperform Jing Liu, she's still going to be a wonderful DPS. And considering that she does have the Silver Wolf idea, right, where she can ignore weakness types, make it so as a new player, as a longtime player, doesn't really matter. You're still going to benefit so much from Acheron that you don't need to chase top numbers like there's nothing holding you to making sure that you need like the number one dps or the number two dps or all and then she's not worth getting you know if, if she doesn't hit those marks right other characters still do amazingly right misha i hate misha but he does great damage he does wonderful damage and he's in like d tier or c tier whatever it is right all the a tier characters right uh, i don't know if, you know jing yuan maybe he's still a maybe he's s who knows with sparkle maybe he's a little bit better now but at the end of the day, all the A rank DPSs, you know, even four star DPSs, a four star Don Hung, a, uh, a Zhui Yi, I think Zhui is way higher in my opinion though, Zhui is cracked, she is amazing, but there's just so many DPSs that still work wonderfully, Himiko, you know, Himiko is still good, you know, uh, Welt as a DPS is great, you know, but I guess we'll forget about Welt in this scenario, uh, actually, talking about Welt, this light cone is also going to be good on a couple other characters if you do want to put it on them for example welt is going to benefit from this uh let's see it's going to deal a 24 percent to his damage 36 percent get an extra debuff although the debuff doesn't really matter too much right and then as for the damage for the ult his ult does do a pretty good amount of damage so welt will be good silver wolf will be good if you want to use this as like on a dps silver wolf or something along those lines other nihility characters sampo not really the dot characters aren't really going to benefit too much from the crit damage the damage percent might be okay maybe a critka a critka would benefit from this pretty nicely as well and as for that let's go on to the other light cones on the banner because if it's a bad light cone banner then it's really hard to recommend going for the light cone because you're going to get so many of the four stars that you want them to be good. That's why Black Swan's light cone was so amazing because it had Dance, 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 Resolution, and Misha's light cone. Three amazing light cones. You could pretty much not be upset with whatever one you pull. But we do finally have the return of Good Night and Sleep Well. 
a wonderful light cone. Actually, a great light cone. Great for Kafka, great for Akron. You know, you are going to be able to get the max stacks out of it, and you are going to get a, I think it's like 72% if you do max this out at S5, you know? As for the other one, Mutual Healing, this is actually going to be, or not Mutual Healing, Post-Op Conversation. This is a great light cone. I love this light cone on anybody, on Bailu, on Huo Huo, on even Luocha. There's so many characters that this is so good on because the energy regen rate is just such a hard stat to get. And the fact that this goes up to 16 energy regen rate, if you do have it maxed, is kind of crazy. So honestly, you can honestly just forget about this outgoing healing when you use your ultimate. And the energy regen is probably going to be more valuable than the majority of other light cones, right? And then as for the hunt light cone, subscribe for more. Increase the damage, the wear base attack and skill by 40 by 24 percent i don't even know what i just said the effect increases by an extra 24 percent. so that means 48 96 percent when maxed it's kind of an okay light cone if you do have an s5 it's probably better than some other free to play light cones but this is probably one that you would want to miss on compared to the others because these two are very very good and good night and sleep well is also wonderful so i do want to move on to a couple of other light cone options for acheron so let's see what those are so there are quite a few nihility light cone options let's just start with this one first i mean tutorial don't put tutorial on her that's kind of weird eyes of the eyes of the prey also not necessary for her whatsoever for mata you are going to be dealing a little bit of extra damage with your shocks because you're pretty much going to be applying shocks if you break them, but if you're not, then you're going to have to use Kafka, so this is probably also a skip. As for Good Night and Sleep Well, going to be a wonderful option, probably her second best option. Hidden Shadow, let's see, Basic Attack, let's skip that, don't even worry about that. If you guys have pulled Welt's Light Cone, right, because you could get, you know, that 1 out of 7 chance and get Welt's Light Cone, you are going to be getting the damage buff overall to your debuffed enemies which is pretty good and then as for the skill the effect hit rate is not necessary but you are also going to increase your attack by another 24 percent so since the base stats of this light cone are actually pretty high this is not going to be a bad option if you only have this and if you don't have an s5 good night and sleep well as for incessant rain effect hit rate is useless the crit rate is nice 12 percent crit rate as for this you're also going to apply a 12 percent uh, vulnerability buff, right? I'm assuming that's a vulnerability. Increased damage for one turn. So that, that's probably a vulnerability because 12% is not very much. So this is going to be a similar light cone. Pretty good to, or pretty similar to um, Welt's light cone. You know, it's going to be okay if you guys don't have the ability to get Akron's light cone. And if you already do have one of these S5 light, or one of these five star light cones. As for Showtime, with the, when the wearer inflicts a debuff on the enemy, they gain Trick. Okay, well, she's not going to be applying debuffs unless you have her Light Cone, so this is probably a skip as well. Increased damage dealt from its wearers uh, to slowed enemies by 24%. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I guess it's actually 48% if you have three. The base stats are probably just so bad, though, that yeah, yeah. Uh, don't put a three-star Light Cone on Acheron. Don't do it. As for Kafka's Light Cone, we are going to get a 24% damage buff, and then there's, the speed buff is going to be pretty nice. It's like a 12, 13, what, 14.4% speed buff or something like that, so that's going to be okay, you know? That's um, actually going to be very helpful, because then you can run around attack boots and then still get her speed up relatively higher. If the wearer hits an enemy, there are going to be inflicted with... Oh, wait, actually, wait a minute. When the wearer hits an enemy not afflicted with a road, there's a 100% base chance to inflict a road. And then you are also going to get that lightning damage. You know what? This is actually going to be a great option for Akron if you're not using Kafka on the team or on either side. And you do want to pop Kafka's light cone on her because this is also going to give you that extra stack from her ability because you're applying a debuff. So you're going to get damage, you're going to get speed, and you're going to be applying the debuff. So if you have Kafka's light cone and you're not going to use Kafka, this is a great option. Actually a wonderful option. Base stats are also great. You're also going to get a little more defense compared to Acheron's Light Cone because the base stats on the defense of Acheron's Light Cone is, I think, 398 or something like that. So, yeah. As for this effect hit rate, nothing. Yeah, don't worry about this. This is nothing. You are going to be able to get an extra stack if you use Resolution. Now, I would probably only recommend this is if you're if you're using a Black Swan Kafka Acheron team and you just don't have any other better options this is going to increase the damage to the entire team and it's going to be okay obviously you're not going to get any stats for her pretty much at all but 
attack's fine for a four star that's the standard and the extra debuff is just going to increase the uptime so you know what this might actually not be too far off like a free to play light gun like not a good night and sleep well but like some other um some other four star light gun as for solitary healing the break effect doesn't really matter too much dot damage doesn't matter too much either and then you're not going to be applying dots unless you're breaking the enemy so solitary healing is also probably not going to be very good on her unfortunately as for this effect hit rate nothing and then when the wearer uses a basic or skill they deal an extra damage to a random enemy oh this might be the battle pass light cone don't even bother with this one this one's this one's ugh. so yeah those are the light cone options let's see what some of her teams would look like depending on which light cone you do have so when it comes to acheron's teams there's a couple of different routes we could go there is one actually very interesting team that i do think is quite nice and that is pretty much this plus acheron now obviously this isn't going to have a sustain but the damage output of this team might actually be crazy because Ronme is going to buff everybody, Kafka is going to be triggering Black Swan, Black Swan is going to be applying debuffs, Kafka is going to be applying debuffs, even Ron May can apply her debuffs one time with her ult, so this is going to be a extremely strong team for Acheron. If you do want to go just for like the natural Silver Wolf and Pela route, that's also an option, right? That is probably like the standard option. Where the hell is Silver Wolf? There she is. So yeah, you could go for this, and then you could honestly just go for like a Fushuan or something. Doesn't really matter the sustain. But this is going to be one of her good teams if you don't have the signature light cone, because you're going to be applying debuffs everywhere. Fushuan probably does want to be on trend though. That way you do get a couple of extra debuffs when your enemies or when the enemies hit you, because that is going to be a pretty good buff for her ult uptime. As for some other options, there's honestly nothing wrong with swapping out Silver Wolf for Gwyn because Gwyn is going to be wonderful. There's going to be some great synergy with the vulnerability. That's going to be nice. Basic attack is going to apply the burn. The ultimate, unfortunately, doesn't apply any debuffs, but it should be fine regardless. So I love Gwyn. So that might be a great team. If you want to go a different route, this is actually pretty interesting. You could run a like a Welt, a Pela, and then honestly put in a harmony character because now you have wealth acting as like a pseudo sustain and then you have your debuffs and you have your two nihilities and then you have a slot open for harmony so this is going to be something to play around with if you can deal enough damage to make sure that the enemies die before you die you know some other options let's see what what have we truly got here if you do have an S2 or an E2 Acheron, let's just talk about that very quickly, you are going to benefit a lot from having ac extra actions with Acheron. So if you only need one Nihility teammate, you might be losing out on a couple debuffs, but let's just say you wanted to go this route. You could go for a Sparkle, a Pela, and then either a Sustain or honestly just another buffing unit, right? So you could go like this and then... You've got your debuffs, you've got extra actions with Sparkle, with, um, or Sparkle gives an extra action to Akron, so you're going to be getting more turns with that. This is, this is a very good team if you do have her signature light cone, but if you have E2, I'm assuming that you have her signature light cone, because her signature light cone is going to be better than either of her Eidolons, and the Eidolon 2 is going to allow for some cool flexibility when it comes to teams, and this will be a great way of buffing her to the maximum extent while also having a relatively good amount of debuffs. Sparkle can also just go in for Branya. Doesn't really matter too much. As for some other synergies, since her ult does so much, you could honestly use Yukong in some certain scenarios. Although if you are or if you are using a Harmony character, you do want to have either Ron May for the break efficiency because she deals ult type break damage right so or toughness damage so it doesn't really matter that's going to increase her ability to break characters a lot lot faster but if you do have her e2 you are going to be able to slot in some random harmony units if you really want to you could honestly go for an asta how would the asta team look you could use asta acheron obviously and then you want to use maybe some dot characters so honestly this and then this even this would be very very cool if you don't have Kafka, you could take out Kafka and then put in Ron May or a sustained character, of course. And this is also going to be a very cool way of increasing your speed on your team. So you can pretty much run attack boots on everybody and still get your two actions per turn. This is going to be pretty cool. As for another option, let's see, is there much else? 
Mm. There might not be too many other options. You might be able to have like some duo DPS shenanigans going on, but honestly, any Nihility character is going to be great. This is going to be my favorite team, honestly, because I do have Black Swan's E1, and if you have her E1, it's honestly going to be a crazy team, because you're going to get so much res penetration from both Acheron, Ranmei, and Black Swan that everybody is just going to be dealing some crazy damage, crazy, crazy damage. Black Swan might even want to go on resolution here instead of her own Light Cone, so just something to think about. Or maybe Kafka. Kafka can go, can go on resolution instead. But that's all I got for today. Uh, there's not much else to talk about here. We are going to go a little more de in depth into her team building, her trace investment, everything that you need to know for Acheron. But that is going to come in the future. So thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe, and adios.